Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 4, Part 4 of the discussion, God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing facts about the laws of compensation or the analogy of reaping what is sown, and how compensation drives forgiveness and repentance. This session was recorded on 19th of September 2017 from 10.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Compensation on Earth is more difficult to recognise. Mm. So, here I'd like to ask, why does it seem like compensation on Earth is difficult to recognise and does not always appear to be just? Yeah, well, th this is a lot about the environment that we have here on Earth. We've got to remember that the environment that is currently on Earth is very, very different to the environment that God designed the Earth to be in the first instance. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, and, and the main reason why it's different, of course, is because humanity has engaged so much sin that the environment here on Earth firstly physically is a lot poorer than it could be but emotionally it's it's also a lot poorer than it could be mm. in other words you're not allowed to feel emotion your emotions are looked down upon the condescended to and so forth and then on top of that spiritually so with regard to love it's a lot poorer than it could be mm. so so the definition of love on the earth is very very different to the definition that love of god has now as a result of that the definition of love on earth is really, from what God's perspective, is sin. So, and quite severe sin, in fact. The, the addictions we engage in, so-called uh, defined by love on earth, God actually sees as quite serious sin, in fact, in many cases. Yes. And, and this has the effect that when we actually act in harmony with God's definition of love on earth, the whole earth and the environment and the people are all confronted mm. by our action. Mm. Now, as a result of the confrontation, they will frequently act violently, if not physically violently, certainly emotionally violently, mm. to our progress in love. Mm. So this then makes it appear like we're getting punished for being loving, yeah. rather than being rewarded for being loving. Yeah. But the punishment isn't coming from God or from God's laws. It's coming from the people in the environment in which we're living. Mm -hmm. In other words, those people who want us to go back to our previous behaviour. Yeah. And, and we need to recognise it as such. We need to recognise the source of the confusion as mm. not being God's design, mm. but rather being the design, if you like, or the creation of humanity. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we often don't do that. Mm. So we become quite confused and we find it quite difficult to see that, no, I have actually made progress even though the rest of the world around me thinks I have not. Yeah. Right? And so then it becomes quite difficult to recognise. And Remember the law, God's laws um, of compensation are there to teach us love in those four primary areas. Yes. The first area being love of self. Mm. Humanity has a very poor conser consideration of love of self. Yeah. And in fact, they're quite confused. Often when you love yourself, they think you're being selfish or narcissistic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then other times, when you um, are selfish and narcissistic, they think you're loving yourself. You know? yeah, yeah. And, and so God's definition of love of self varies greatly to uh, humanity's definition of love of self. Mm -hmm. So uh, because God's definition of love of self and humanity's de definition of love of self are quite far apart, mm -hmm. we, can, we can see that whenever you engage love of self now, the world around you is going to think actually quite ill of you. Yeah. And the same goes for love of others. If you examine the love of others area, which the laws of compensation are trying to help you correct, if you live in harmony with the love of others, 
God's way, that means you tell the truth to others. That means that you're honest and open with them. That means that you share your opinions willingly and openly. That means that, you know, there's quite a lot of things that mean, if you yes. think about it, that the average person on earth doesn't like. Yes. Right. So the average person on earth thinks you're not being loving to them. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's particularly the case if you don't feed their addictions. Yeah. So, so now they think you're not being loving to them when you're being more loving. Mm -hmm. They think you're not being good, you, you're being selfish when you're not being selfish. Mm -hmm. And they also look at the, how you treat the environment and they think, well, why are you worried about the environment at all? We're just here to use the thing. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the relationship with God, most people on the planet don't really care much about it. Even when they're religious, they barely care about it, to be frank. Yeah because they don't really have a relationship with God and they sort of, their relationship with God is more about their beliefs about God than it is about a relationship. Yeah. So because of all of those factors, um, the average person who does good on earth, who, mm. from God's perspective, may find it quite difficult initially, in particular, mm. to recognize the benefits of competition yeah. on earth while they're doing good. Yes. Mm. So it seems to me that you, this is where a strong delineation between <clears throat> what is occurring to me as a result of personal choices <clears throat> in the people around me or the people um, who are interacting with me mm. uh, and what is the result of God's laws in operation. If I keep in mind that God's laws are never going to override the free will choices of others, then I could start to maybe logically reason about it. Exactly. Yeah. But it does require some analysis, yeah. which, of course, uh, the more you live in harmony with God's laws, the more awareness you have uh, to analyse properly. Yeah. But And so you do see that, you know, someone's poor treatment of you isn't because of the law of attraction at work, but rather because of their decision mm -hmm. to treat you badly. Mm. But it is sometimes difficult initially when yeah. you begin the process of working through issues and doing loving things on earth. Yeah. It is sometimes difficult to recognize compensation. And that's why generally it is more difficult to recognize because the environment on mm -hmm. earth is much more harsh yeah. than the environment that God would like to see on yes. earth. Yeah. And it's harsh because of humanity's con general condition. Condition. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's great. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Why compensation on earth makes more allowances for change? So th this is this is interesting in relation even to our um, to our last point of discussion, which was about compensation not necessarily being evident. And we talked there in that section about um, positive compensation not necessarily being that evident, hmm. but it, it, we could have spoken, couldn't we, in the reverse, in that because the environment is so geared towards opposing God's definition of love, often negative um, compensation is overlooked because there's so much other validation from the world yes. coming towards us. The environment having the effect. Yeah. That we believe that when we're doing everything in harmony with the environment, we should get rewarded. We should so get far. rewarded, yeah. yeah. But I'd like to ask you now, when we commit sin on earth, why are all the consequences of the sin not immediately enforced? This seems to make compensation more difficult to recognise and not always appear to be just. Yeah, well, uh, firstly, a very important thing we must realise is that God knows that when we're on earth, mm -hmm. we're, this is, un, un, you know, unlike what people who believe in reincarnation believe, the fact is that this is our first visit. Yeah. And any person who um, is in their first visit, and on, when I say our, I don't mean yours and mine, mm -hmm. I mean every person other than 14 people who have returned to earth, mm -hmm. it is their first visit to earth. Mm -hmm. Now, since it's their first visit to earth, mm -hmm. um, and before they came to earth, they were in a completely unaware Self, un, self, lack, they lack self-awareness, so the unaware state. Mm -hmm. You can see that it's, it's merciful to allow people to make mistakes and then correct their mistakes. Mm. Now, if every mistake you made was immediately um, compensated for emotionally and spiritually, mm -hmm. then it wouldn't give you the time even to make the correction. So, so, for example, if I give an example, let's say, 
let's say I treat you badly somehow, like it was a mistake, a genuine mistake, let's say, that I treat you badly. If the law was in operation where the, my soul condition and my, my emotions all got immediately hammered with that result, right, it, it would be very hard for me to take the next possible step, which is possible for me, and that is, oh, I realize I've made a mistake and I'm sorry, you know what I mean? Where I actually take that immediately, immediate repentant attitude for the mistake I made. The beauty of having some delay between there being an immediate consequence and, 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 and not is that I now have the ability to go, oh, I didn't mean to do that and actually make a correction mm -hmm. before the problem gets out of hand and before my soul feels the detrimental consequence of my action. So can I just pause you for a second? Because I realised at the beginning there was some clarification I wanted to make. Sure. So just now you're speaking about how this, you mentioned the soul condition and the emotions not feeling the immediate detrimental effect of the unloving mistake and unloving action towards another. Mm -hmm. Now, in the previous sections, we have said that compensation is applied immediately upon the soul. It is. But to clarify... But. Yep. Remember, we also said it measures intention. Exactly. So here I'm talking about an unintentional yes. sin, something yep. where it's not intentional, yeah. So compensation measures intention. So yeah. imagine if it didn't measure intention, it would it would immediately impose the result bang. Yeah. And and before I've even had a chance to correct my action, yeah. that was a mistake. Yeah. So so perhaps um, I can just clarify um, what I'm a bit confused about. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that all the consequences of the sin. In a previous section, we talked about what happens when we've passed into the spirit world and there we see that the compensation is reflected in our environment and we didn't talk about we could have about where I'm able to go, the limitations on my movement. Mm -hmm. It's reflected in my spirit body, how I feel, like all of these things. Now, on earth, that's not the case. I take an unloving action towards you, whether knowingly or not, and there's a, it seems to me there's an immediate compensatory emotional effect on my soul, mm -hmm. but I can still go home to my same house and take my little vitamin and maybe get over some of the humps that are beginning to show up in my body because I'm continually sitting, but you know, mm -hmm. I can dampen down those things. And um, it, I can still go wherever I want mm -hmm. within reason. Mm -hmm. um, so those things are not limited. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was thinking of when I established this question. Mm -hmm. And I've answered. Is that, is and that I what feel you, like I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I just wanted to. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Before we get into the discussion. Yeah, I get what you're saying. But, yeah. but the first stage is the first stage is if there was an immediate like penalty for a sin, even if we we're unaware, yeah. then then basically it's going to be a lot harder to, like you'd have some harsh feelings to have to go through before you immediately went into a repentant state. So that's for the first thing about it. We need yeah, to understand. I don't quite get that bit. Yeah, well, sorry. We, we, well, we need to understand that um, time here on earth, time, things can't be done instantly. Uh -huh. you, you need time to reflect and consider, particularly when you're in your infancy. Yes. So, so I sort of like, I do something, I see that you're hurt by it. Now I've got, I, I need to be given a little bit of time, surely, to work out, oh, you are hurt. You know, yeah. I, I might not see you for a week. Yeah. And then I realise, oh, you are hurt. You know, yeah. Yeah. I didn't even see the result of my action, it yeah. might be. Yeah. So I need to see it. And then I go, then it gives me time to go, oh, well, I didn't mean to do that. Yep. And also make some corrections yep. of that. So that that's the first thing that we need to consider is that is that the reason why it, there's sort of this seeming delay, if mm. you like. And um, and here I'm talking about mistakes. Yeah. Um, is to allow you to come to some kind of conscious awareness of the mistake and its action and its consequence and the effect of it. Yeah. So, so you can see a relationship between cause and effect and therefore want to correct it. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if God immediately penalized the action without the delay, yeah. um, and remembering, of course, that we're talking about a mistake here, not a purposeful action, yeah. 
And if immediately penalise the action without there being some kind of delay, um, you, you would have, or allowance of the delay, I should say, yeah. you, you, would, you wouldn't have the ability to make corrections uh, without there being a lot of pain beforehand. Mm. Right? Uh, I'm just not clear on what the delay part of that is. Um, do you mean the delay in the emotional awakening of the conscience or no. do you mean the delay in the physical... The like delay the, in your environment. Yeah, so the that's, that's why I brought that up earlier. Yeah. You mean, yeah. You've basically got 70 years delay for the yes. average person. <laughs> yes. The, ba the, basic, the average person on earth has got a 70 year delay, yeah. if you yeah. like, yeah. 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 <laughs> for all of your actions pretty yes. much, although the closer you get to 70 years old or whatever the time is... You're, you're lessening your window. You're lessening your window, yeah. obviously. <laughs> So the beauty of the window is yeah. that it gives you a chance to correct your actions. Yes, I get that right? now. And, yeah. and if you didn't have the chance to correct your actions, even your intentional ones, mm -hmm. then um, obviously you need to, you know, if you didn't have that chance yep. and everything was happening exactly as it is in the spirit world, you, there would be a lot of other emotions that are generated, self-interest emotions that yes. it generates, which we'll talk about later in yes. another section, yeah. that would, would, would come up. Yeah that would then also need to be corrected by God's laws. Yeah. Where all you're interested in is your own happiness and the only reason why you do good things yeah. is because of your own happiness, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, the intention of God's laws isn't to do that. The intention yeah. of God's laws is to correct your behaviour, even if it, it means that you're not going to be that happy, yeah. you're still going to correct your behaviour and do the right thing, what, yes. what is good and loving, right? Yeah. Even if there's no happiness instant. Yes. instant happiness there might be long term yep. always is long term yep. but there might not be instant happiness because of the environment in which you live so so it's important that with mistakes or even with intentional sin that there is some kind of delay in terms of us noticing the the outcomes mm -hmm. now our soul condition still degrades yeah and all of those things are all happening instantly yep. obviously it degrades less if it's a mistake than it is if it's an intentional mm -hmm. sin because mm -hmm. that's the law mm -hmm. but your it being forced upon you yeah as an awareness having a having a delay on earth until the time you passed being forced upon you yeah gives you a chance now to correct through your own exercise of your loving will yeah correct any mistakes you might have made yes so so i don't I don't engage with one addiction and drop dead of cancer the next day. There's a disease process that happens over time. And Which you can that's, correct. Yes, I can correct. I can turn that back if I start to yeah. engage yeah. differently. Yeah. Whereas in the spirit world, if you take an action that is the cause of cancer, you'll have cancer yeah. instant. It's there. Yeah. It's going to be there until yeah. you release the reason for yeah. it, right? Gotcha. And... Um, and that, that's the case for every sin you commit. Where, yeah. Whereas here on earth, there's this time frame delay, if yes. you like. Yes. This time delay. We'll talk more about time delay later, but yeah. uh, there's these time delays. And the time delays help you mm -hmm. see the consequence of your action mm -hmm. and also then and measure them mm -hmm. and then attempt to correct them yes. if that's what you wish to do. Yeah. So it also allows for ignorance yes. involved in the matter, like where you're yes. not educated. Yes. So you, you, you get to see the results of your lack of education mm -hmm. and then you get to see the consequence of that and then you have to start having a desire to be educated even yeah. and, and to educate yourself about how the law works and everything as well. Yes. So the, these are all good things that, yeah. that the law, that the, the delay, the if delay. you like, occurs. Yeah. Yeah. Now the delay isn't in your condition. No. Right. Because it, that is in, in, immediately imposed. Yeah. But of course, if, if you make a mistake, there's less of a conditional change yes. than there is if you were intentional. Mm -hmm. yep. And there's also, uh, if you made a mistake and didn't correct it even though you knew, mm. that's a greater problem mm -hmm. than if you made a mistake and as soon as you knew, you corrected, corrected. it. Yeah. So it just depends on the degree as to what correctional facilities you're given in yes, terms of yeah. being able to yes. have a delay in the different outcomes. Yeah. But, but in terms of delay, we're talking primarily about the delay of your environment mm -hmm. and your, your awareness of your condition. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, and there are other things too that are great about it. It gives you a chance to associate with people who are in a better condition mm -hmm. who can tell you, oh, that was a mistake you did there. You should be aware of that. You know, it gives you, if mm -hmm. you're a child, it gives you a chance to talk to mum and dad about the problem and 
mm -hmm. you know, ask them about, oh, is this right or is this wrong and so mm -hmm. forth. It gives you chances to, to deal with the problem mm. rather than, you know, just feel like, oh, I'm just getting hammered for something I wasn't even, I didn't even know. So, so you've mentioned this, this like an innocent kind of a mistake it mm -hmm. allow, and that allows you to start to become educated. So you go from a state of ignorance about your will and its effects and what's loving and what's unloving, mm -hmm. and you start to gain this awareness in a way that's quite merciful really, isn't it? Because Very merciful, yeah. You, you're not immediately smacked with, you know, yeah. a limitation on your environment. No, it's like, it's like you're living in a nice, pretty house and all of a sudden you did something wrong and now you yeah. that house is taken away from you and you're given a dun, dun dungeon to live on. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, until you deal with it. Yeah. Like, and it was a mistake. Like, yeah. it's yes. not, not very kind, no. would it be? And even if it wasn't a mistake, but you did intend to correct it. Yes. Like, that wouldn't be very kind either if no. you think about it. So, yeah. you know, obviously all these things are measured and, yeah. and this beautiful mercy is displayed. On earth. It's actually a merciful process. Mm. So, mm. so what people are calling often call unfair or yeah. lack of justice is actually more mm. merciful than mm. what they are aware of. Yes, mm. we just come from our own perspective, don't mm. we? Um, you also mentioned the ability to um, associate with people who uh, perhaps have more knowledge or in better condition of love to help us to learn in this education process. Mm. Uh, something you mentioned briefly, which is quite important, was uh, it ensures that there's a loving motivation for actions that comes from our own development, mm. doesn't it? So yeah, it gives you time you to develop your loving motivation. Yes. So, for example, if I do something and a few weeks later I realise that it had a harmful effect on you, and um, that, uh, you know, already time has gone past, mm -hmm. and now I go, okay, what am I going to do about that? Like, I feel like I want to do something about it. I want to fix that. What can I do to fix that? Now, some things can't be fixed because they've been done, but but there are other things where you can at least go and, uh, and apologise and and make recompense. And this is something that I noticed a lot of people who say they're sorry on earth never do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they never make recompense for the action. Yes. Which means they're not really sorry, no. actually. Yeah. So, in other words, they come and say sorry. Yeah but they're not willing to pay for the, the action, action they took somehow. Yeah. So, you know, they might be sorry they hit your car, but they're not willing to pay for its repair. Yeah. You know, yeah. or, you know, yeah. so are they really sorry? Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. And that's something great we'll talk about in repentance as well, yeah. isn't it? That's right. But, but also, um, I think the point you were making earlier was it, it means that I won't be just motivated by just getting better things and having a happy life myself mm. uh, because that doesn't necessarily happen immediately. I'll have to develop, like decide, do I want to be a loving individual or no do I want to be a selfish individual? Yeah. And and this, this time lag means that I have to develop in one way or another before I enter the spirit world. Choose to, yeah. 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 You're making choices even if you think you're not. Yes. Uh, you are making choices. Yes. And not only that, it gives you the chance to go, okay, um, let's look at the world and its condition. Mm -hmm. Do I want to be like that? Yeah. Or do I want to be different? Yeah. Like, and am I willing to stand out and be knocked down for mm -hmm. being st for standing out? Mm -hmm. Because that that that's a that's, that's an aspect of character. Mm -hmm. You know, if I if I can develop my character to such a degree that I am willing to be loving, even if the world around me is is the opposite towards me, mm -hmm. now my character is very well developed. Yes. And and there are great rewards for that kind of development of character. Yes. And that was one of the points we wrote here that ensures that the motivation for loving behaviour comes sincerely from the heart. Mm. Um, because if we if we flipped that, if we said, oh no, on earth the the positive compensation for taking just say a loving action or an action based thing only um, happened immediately, then uh, then this selfish. And I've probably said that enough anyway, but it's just part of our notes. Here. Well, a lot yeah. of the conversation for loving actions do occur immediately. Uh, we're not always sensitive to them, obviously, yes. because of the environment again. Yes. You know, the environment, like from God's perspective, the environment is immediately being it, it repaired adjusted and, and repaired adjusted, based yes. on your loving action. Yes. But the world is working against that yes. process, obviously, so you can't always notice it easily. Mm -hmm. And that referred to our previous question that you asked, yeah. why don't we always notice it? Yeah. But 
it, it does make allowance for changes in this regard and, yeah. and it does allow uh, for growth mm -hmm. and also development of a good character mm -hmm. based upon true desire, yeah. not falsified desire for self-interest. So what would be a self selfish interest? Well, imagine if, uh, let's say, um, on earth, every time you did a good deed, you got a better home. Mm. Well, most people probably on earth would be willing to do good deeds under that circumstance. But wouldn't come from their heart. <laughs> it might not no. come from their heart. Yeah, yeah. well, their, their heart is sort of selfish in that. Um, and, and something else we mentioned here is that it allows all people to develop the desire for forgiveness and repentance, which is the overarching theme of this series, isn't it? Yes. Mm. So without seeing the results of behaviour, and without seeing the consequence of our actions we'll, we'll st and without feeling the consequence, positive or mm -hmm. negative, you know, rewards or, co or correction, mm -hmm. um, it's highly unlikely we'll know what to forgive and what to repent for. So how is that distinct then? How is that uh, an, a, a point for the time delay? Why is that relevant to the time delay? Because in, that would work also in the spirit world, wouldn't it? Well, you see by, uh, yeah. No, it's about the time to develop the desire, isn't it? Yes. Yes. The yeah. time to develop the desire to repent. Yeah. Or time to develop the desire to forgive. Yeah. Once we see, oh, like I'm storing up all this anger and rage towards you, and I've done it for years and years and years, and it's eaten me away, and it's eating our relationship away, and I start to see it, I think, I'm, oh, I need to forgive, really. That's what mm. I need to do. Mm. But I've had years to work that out, mm. you know. Um, and, and sometimes the time delay and getting the results of, you know, the results are all instant, but the time delay, the allowance of time for me to come to my conclusions yes. um, helps me do it by myself. Yeah. And, and the beauty of doing it by myself means that no one's had to tell me to do it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's probably going to be a much more sincere action yeah. than if somebody had sat me down and said, oh, this is what you need to do. Or my life is just so crappy in the spirit world, for example, that, oh, OK, I'm going to engage. I'm going to have to do it yeah. now. You know? yeah. 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 Now, God, God has done that in the spirit world because we've not chosen. Mm -hmm. And so what God's trying to encourage us to do on earth is to choose repentance and forgiveness while on earth. Yes. Because if you don't, you go, it's going to be forced upon you through yes. the compensatory laws in yes. the spirit world. Yes. All right? But you're far better off to choose it. There's huge rewards for choosing it with desire mm -hmm. while you're on earth mm -hmm. compared to having to be forced upon you later. Later on. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Compensation in the spirit world is more eas easily recognised and persistent. So this is this section is really the converse of what we were just speaking about about how compensation on earth is often less easily recognised. Yes. So is it true that after our death, while living in the spirit world, the penalties and rewards of compensation are made much clearer? Well, let's firstly base all of this comment upon the fact, uh, as we've already discussed in the previous section, that firstly, there has to be an awareness that we've died yes. <laughs> for this to all be true. Yes. So, so yes. let's assume that mm -hmm. there is the awareness that mm -hmm. we've died. If there is an awareness that we died, then yes, it is a, to a degree, there is, it is much more clear about compensation. Mm -hmm. Both the rewards and the penalties yes. are much clearer to us. Um, and this, uh, this assumes, of course, that we're not in an earthbound state, that we have stopped sinning, mm -hmm. at least, and we can start feeling the consequences of the sin. And also, we continue to do good things, and, we've, and, we're, and we're trying to continue to be loving, you know, mm -hmm. and, and therefore reap the consequences of being loving. Yeah. Now, under those circumstances, there's, there's quite a lot of reasons why it's more you can e more easily see that that's what's going on that there is a penalty and a reward a penalty based on a loving acts and reward mm. based on loving acts and you can see the co the relationship between the unloving act and the penalty or the loving act and the reward mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot more easily than you can on earth firstly because god has control of the environment mm -hmm. <laughs> so instead of the world being its environment, yep. the actual environment in the spirit world 
is the environment that is perfectly attuned to your condition and what you've done. <laughs> it's not anything different other than that. So it's not a collect, you mean it's not, uh, it's not as, oh, how do I want to say this? On earth, mm -hmm. God still created the environment, <laughs> yes. but he allowed for more. But no, 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 let's be more specific. The earth environment to a large degree has been not created by God now. It's been created by tens of thousands of years of human construction on earth that have all been in opposition to God. Yes. So, so, so what we see on earth right now is nothing like God originally <laughs> created. Yeah, I, yes. Uh, um, Either in the environment emotionally or physically. Yeah. So that... That's because... Um, the, the environment, there's a difference in the way that God constructed the earth environment tens of thousands of years ago to how God's constructed the spirit world because our will uh, and... No, it's not because of that, really. No, okay, sorry. <laughs> Let me just phrase it. Can, can I say what it's about and then we can talk about it more in more detail? Yeah. If we examine the earth environment, humankind of... Like God created the pristine environment initially and placed the first human couple on it. Since that time, nearly 150,000 years ago or so, humans have done a large amount of things to this earth, both through their emotional condition and through their physical actions. Mm -hmm. And these things have severely destroyed both the earth environment itself, physically, but also emotionally and spiritually, the earth environment has been severely degraded as a result of humans' choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, in the spirit world, Whenever you create what we would normally create on Earth, your, your location would be moved to a place you are actually creating the location. On Earth, you're creating the location, but much more slowly. Yes. And, that, and, and, and it affects much more people altogether because it's all being created collectively it's, collective issue. it's all coming down in its condition collectively mm -hmm. whereas in the spirit world when you take an action and your soul is in a specific condition the location has to be created specifically for your condition if it doesn't already exist yep. and if it already exists you are moved to that mm -hmm. location your soul uh, automatically moves your spirit body to that location that, yep. that is unavoidable yep the difference on earth is you can go and get a pristine area on earth and live there even though you're in a terrible condition which is mm -hmm. what a lot of richer people will do mm -hmm. right because they have the means to yes but you can't do that in the spirit world yeah if your condition is degraded so too is your location immediately degraded yeah and that's where you know we need to understand the difference between those two things yes yeah so even though there is a definite degradation on earth of condition or environment it's more to do the collective behavior of humanity than your individual creation. Yes. Whereas in the spirit world, once you've passed, your environment is perfectly your individual creation. And there may be other people who have a similar condition who live there, mm -hmm. but they are all living there because it's part of your creation, mm -hmm. that environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would you say that the God has created, it's a follow on of what we've been talking about, but God's created the earth-based experience and even the earth-based environment mm -hmm. to be more responsive to collective will, to have this time lag, whereas the spirit life and the spirit world environment has been designed to be more responsive to moment by moment my condition and, yes, uh, and, and in an individual way, an and individual it's, world. And it's very clear why. Yes. Because, it, it, because if you can't see what's happening on Earth and you've, yeah. not, and you've lived your 70 or 80 years on Earth, if you're fortunate, and you've passed, then it needs to be forced upon you some way yes. in a new state. Otherwise, you'll never see. Yeah. Like if you can't see the degradation of the environment based upon your own actions or the actions collectively of humanity, yeah. then, then you're not going to see how your actions are participating in that destruction yeah. and and as a result now it now needs to be made more clear to you yes that that's yes. actually happening and the spirit world does make it more clear to you mm. so perhaps then we can ask what are the benefits of compensation 
being made much more clear in the spirit world and we've actually listed a whole bunch of what are essentially the benefits of it yeah well, let's uh, go through them maybe section. one by yeah. one and yeah and if we need to discuss them we will have yeah mm. okay so people who persisted in sin on earth did not correct their behavior and so now need a more forceful set of circumstances in order to become aware of their sin and the effects of their sin upon themselves and others mm. Mm. yeah i think that sort of speaks for itself it but does. it's exactly what i've just said exactly mm -hmm. yeah Additionally, it still allows for mistakes to be made, mm -hmm. but there is a much higher sensitivity to the pain caused by each mistake. Yes, and here we're talking about there's mistakes, isn't there, that are uh, ignorant mistakes, mm -hmm. which it allows to be made. And of, of course, uh, those are less painful than mm -hmm. a mistake that's purposeful or, yeah. or a true intentional sin yes right yes and there'll be a higher pain associated yes. with that yes. but it allows for both it to does. still occur it does but uh, because you're now more in tune sensitively mm -hmm. sensitively with them mm -hmm. it's highly unlikely you'll continue it for too long yeah and when i say too long I, there's still people that continue it for thousands of years but if uh, they had their way they'd probably consider consider you know continue the action for hundreds of thousands of years yes and in one of our previous sessions, we had a long discussion, didn't we, about true mistakes versus versus intentional sin. Yeah. And we saw there that basically the majority of sin is intentional. Yes. Uh, and would you say that by the time you hit the spirit world, you've been, God's process of compensation has been educating you, depending on how old you are when you passed, about sin for quite some time now decades usually yeah. you know and if yeah. not you know some people live to be a hundred even yes. so a yeah. whole a whole you a know, centenary century. of of education yeah. yeah so the mistakes we make are going to be uh few would you say yes uh, uh, you know there there are things that we're ignorant about but we can't really be ignorant about their effects very much mm. you know the way god's designed the universe you know that something must be causing pain and suffering. Yeah. Uh, something must be causing the pain of others in particular. Yeah. And when you're interacting with others, it's fairly obvious sometimes that, you know, that yeah. most of the time that yeah. what you particularly if you're ethical, mm -hmm. you can see that if you hurt from an action, then it probably would make sense that another might hurt from the action yeah. too. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not always possible though, because there's certain, as I said, the environment on earth is, quite distorted mm -hmm. and therefore has a distorted skew yeah. towards being untruthful and and you know feeding addiction rather than truly loving a person mm -hmm. and so forth mm -hmm. and those kind of things we might be ignorant of yeah and and, uh, and if we are truly ignorant as measured by the law yep it allows for it, it. allows for that yeah mm. okay the spirit world still allows for correction of mistakes but now the full penalty of this mistake must be corrected. Yes, that, that's always been the case, of course. If we mm. do a mistake on earth, the full penalty has to be corrected. But now the, the correction process is forced upon you. You can't go and live in a better environment mm -hmm. while it's happening. While you're correcting. While you're correcting yeah. it. You've yeah. got to correct it and then you'll live in a better yes. environment. So instead of you b receiving the benefit of uh benefits that you do on earth mm -hmm. now a lot of those benefits are not available to you yeah still allows for ignorant sin and the repair of ignorant sin which we've spoken about a bit but with sp stronger penalties due to the desire for ignorance and selfishness that's already been exercised on the earth yeah, so again, if we compare Earth with the spirit world, we can see that if I desire ignorance on Earth, I can get away with it for a fairly long period of time. Mm -hmm. And that's not because God's laws are letting us off the hook, but it's because the environment is letting us off the hook. God's laws are still imposing upon the person who wants or chooses ignorance, yep. but, but most of them are detuned from it because the environment supports your ignorance or yes. allows you for your ignorance. Yep. In the spirit world, that doesn't occur. In the yep. spirit world, you desire ignorance, you're going to get it. Ignorance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're not going to get education. And that you notice the penalties after a while of not knowing where you are and not knowing what to do and not knowing where you're living and not understanding anything. And after a while, you, you, 
you feel this deep feeling of like, oh, I want to know, I want to know yeah. what's going on. And then you know. Yes. And that, and that encourages your, your desire to no longer be ignorant. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah. Um, it actually forces a motivation from the desire to avoid more pain and suffering. Yes, yeah, so this uh, you know obviously a person who is continued to sin all their life on earth and then they pass they've obviously got a desire to sin mm -hmm. and um, what what this thing is doing is what compensation is doing is it's trying to now move our desire away from a desire to sin to a desire to be loving yeah and and it, and it's now going to force that motivation yes and by by us feeling more and more sensitive to the pain and suffering yeah and that's how it forces it into action yeah. Now it needs the force because mm -hmm. we didn't respond to the gentle nudges yes. that have occurred on earth. Yeah. And so now we need to be forced into the corrective yeah. behavior. It's pretty amazing to, it kind of boggles my mind that the compensatory pain is gentle nudging he here on earth because it's quite severe, isn't it? Well, again, it's severe because we're in so much sin on the planet. It's yeah. like there is so many things happening on the planet. It's still very gentle compared to the amount of sin we're in. Uh huh. Mm. Yes, and that's that's the mind-boggling thing. If you relay if you... up the amount of sin yeah. and then the amount you know of gentleness involved yeah. on Earth, it it is it, it, there's a huge amount of gentleness associated with that sin. Mm -hmm. Once we pass, and that sin that sin becomes very self-evident. And, and also ha the, its effects become very self-evident. Now you're going to be forced into making these mm -hmm. changes through the laws rather than it just being, you know, some kind of allowance being, ma you know, made yeah. or time going past or none of those things are allowed anymore. Yes. And does that mean that, you know, if I'm, in comp if I'm becoming more aware of my compensatory pain here while I'm on earth, as soon as I pass, it's going to jump. It's going to jump in its tense intensity, or can I become? Uh, well, see, more it depends sensitive. a bit on awareness of the problem. It's yeah. like if, for most people, where they really struggle is not not the things that they are aware of on yeah. Earth, but rather the things that they're not aware of on Earth. Yeah. So, for example, it, the average guy on the planet still doesn't see a problem with sexually projecting at women. Mm -hmm. So when he passes, he's going to feel the full effects of that. Yeah. Right. The average woman on Earth still doesn't see the da damaging effects of her fear when mm -hmm. she passes, that she's going to see the full effects of that. Mm -hmm. These are areas where we tolerate things on Earth, mm -hmm. and, and as a result, we expect them to be tolerated in the spirit world, and they're yeah. not going to be. Yeah. 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 Whereas if there's an issue that we're already on Earth feeling like, oh, it's bugging me, I'm always rude to that person, I'm ha I, that's not good, I can yeah. feel it. It's going to be easier. It's going to be easier. To and there'll be less pain. Uh, associated with it, it too be so because we're already yeah. aware yeah. it's the things we're not aware of yeah the things that we believe are normal yeah you know if you like it's, a, it's old saying if, if a guy believes that the woman every time he comes home should cook him a meal mm -hmm. he thinks that's normal mm -hmm. he doesn't see that as an unloving demand upon mm -hmm. her right mm -hmm. so so there's a problem there yes yeah yeah yes. all right uh, thank you back to the benefits mm -hmm. um of the penalties and rewards of compensation being really there in our face in the yep. spirit world it still ensures desire is developed from within yep. the individual uh, it does not allow for a person to live in an environment that is much better than their soul condition yeah so that's actually a good thing yes yeah, yeah. so it's like on earth you can live in an environment that is much much different to mm -hmm. your soul condition in mm -hmm. the spirit world not going to be possible not possible yeah and it does not allow for a person to damage others in a better condition. Yeah, and this is a very loving thing that God's done in terms of the reward for those who have been loving. Yeah. That God, God now prevents the unloving person from damaging the loving person mm -hmm. and, and unless the loving person allows it. Yeah. Right, of course, you know, unless they allow it, then mm. if they allow it, then of course it can happen. But yeah. But if the loving person doesn't want it to occur, and also they're living in a better place. condition yep. and a diff different, better environment, then it's going to be much more difficult for the person in the unloving condition to harm them anymore. Mm -hmm. And and this is a great thing, actually, yeah. Yeah. in terms of experiencing the reward of doing good while you're on the, on Earth. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay, excellent. Thank you.